Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome to Cryptarch. So, Cryptarch is a 2D roguelike shooter game set in space, all about going into ancient alien vessels and destroying a mysterious core and the systems preventing it without horribly dying yourself with a couple interesting twists. So let's hop into it and see exactly what we're looking at here. We're gonna do our best to, uh zipped through the game here. I played it uh, probably two or three hours so far. Steam says four, but that's not exactly accurate. But uh, either way, we are a motley crew of privateers, as we can see here, sent to salvage some valuable xenotechnology from a mysterious alien vessel called the Cryptarch. Unfortunately, we're not actually sure where the Cryptarch is. So in order to narrow it down, we're going to have to go to a variety of other ships to gain some information from destroying their cores and figuring out what we can do with them in order to make our way further into the fleet. So here we arrive. Let our engineer talk a little. Checklist cleared, Pioneer spit shined, and weapons free. I'll get the angle grinder up when you get back. So, we have access to choosing one of four ships right now. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, there are a number of nodes before we get to the Cryptarch. We have to successfully complete six of these uh, ship-based missions before we get to the final one at the Cryptarch itself, and they get increasingly dangerous as we go. You'll also notice that we have our total revenue at the top of the screen and our bank at the bottom right of the screen. If we run out of money, we lose. And that is basically your game over condition. If you completely run out of money, your contract is revoked and you're sent back to wherever we came from. Right now, we're going to pick a location, though. If we choose, say, this Foundry class ship, it tells us a bunch of information on the right side of the screen there. The difficulty is apparently more difficult than those around it. It has a reward of $97,000 for uh, clearing it successfully. It has a goal time of 6 minutes and 33 seconds, which is important, and there are bonus rewards for doing a certain variety of things. One is for destroying all sentry systems on board the ship, one's for having no more than 3 maximum hull on our ship when we go into an enemy, and we also have a loadout maximum cost of $100,000, which gives us more money. It also tells us what systems the uh, this, uh, this vessel has on board it, and what types of problems we're likely to run into. It also tells us how many tech advances, health stations, and ammo stations are benefits to us. So we can kind of use this information to judge what we're going to be getting into, what kind of problems we're going to run into, and what we'll get out of it. If we go look at a different one, it has different bonuses, it has different re rewards, different goal times, different systems and AI, and all these different things. So we have to pay attention to what we're going to to make sure we get a good reward. We're going to go check out this foundry though, and let's head over there. So we'll head over to this ancient alien wreck, but things may be a little bit more complicated once we get there, because there's a couple important things in this game. One of them is setting up your loadouts. The game froze a little bit here. I hope it's uh, going to recover. Yes, it did. Perfect. It's just because we're recording right now that it has a hard time. So this is us. We're this uh, angry-faced robot right here. Person in a robo-suit. And we have a couple different options available to us. We can take a look at the armory here. And we can see we have a whole bunch of things we can modify. For example, we have our hull strength in the top left there. We can actually re intentionally reduce our maximum hull strength. So we start with less, but it costs us less. We'll start with six, I suppose. We're not going to go for max hull of three. We will try and get some other interesting things. You also have your weaponry, though. We have four slots that can equip different weapons. We have a medium machine gun on our mouse one. We have a ramming spike on our middle mouse button. We have a shield on our uh, right mouse button. And we have a high explosive grenade on our F key. So if we were to experiment with some of these, you can see we can ram enemies. We can fire away with a machine gun. We can activate a defensive shield. And there's a variety of other upgrades that we'll potentially be able to find in the future. Right now, our options are fairly limited. We have a variety of different things that we can choose to start out with, but it's not a huge list. There's also items we can take with us that'll give us some other potential benefits, but add more to our cost. So that brings up our cost for the bank for going into the mission, which means we get less out of it. The cheaper we can successfully do a mission means the more bank we accumulate, which means the safer we are if things start to go wrong. As it stands though, we've been sitting around in menus for a while, let's get out of this ship and see what we're doing. So if we look at our map now, this is the alien vessel which we have been tasked to enter and destroy. Now, 
That's all well and good, but there's a lot of stuff on here. Some of the important things to look out for are those red marks are enemies of various types. These uh, atom marks are tech advances. We want to try and pick up as many of those as we can because those give us more options for things to bring with us into missions. These red symbols are enemy systems. This is a shield generator protecting the core. If we don't destroy it, then we will not be able to do any damage because it is being protected by the shield. And these green symbols are things we can use to benefit ourselves. An ammo supply pod, which will heal us, or rather refill our ammo for a cost. And there's also a medical supply pod over here, which will heal us instead. There's a variety of these drone factories, which are going to keep generating enemies since we're on a foundry class ship. It's not uncommon to see a bunch of them. Alarm systems will alert nearby enemies. The sentry system controls all the interior defense turrets. And we can try and move in here and take these systems out manually one by one. So, we're going to try and do our best here to clear this ship out quickly, but you can sort of plan your route as we start out. These, any door that is white can be easily accessed, any door that's red can be accessed after we take out door control if there is one, or by activating these key nodes. So we're going to try and go in here pretty fast, because you want to try and beat all of the missions without going over the time limit. If you do go over the time limit, then you take a cash penalty, and since money determines whether or not you're going to be able to stay alive in this game, you want to try and make sure you're moving at pretty high speed, otherwise you're going to regret it. So we just got a sensor suite and cluster grenades there, there's some enemy turrets that are trying to fire at us, but we're going to more or less ignore them. I don't think there's actually anything over here we need going the wrong way. Some enemies are being spawned there by the drone spawners we saw earlier. We're going to go take out this shield system because that would be a good idea. We can boost around with the space bar in addition to doing things like activating our shield or ramming enemies to death. And now all of these systems have specific ways in which we have to damage them. This one, ow, will reflect bullets off of its own shield back at us. Like that, we've just taken a little bit of damage that way. We have to make sure that we're not hurting ourselves more than we otherwise have to. Ow. Evidently, I have a bit of trouble with some of these moving uh, pieces of still. Haven't quite mastered the art of destroying them all safely. But now that we've destroyed the shield generator on the... Uh, uh, on the core, it'll be a lot easier to take out. We still have plenty of time, though, so we're going to run around and try and grab as many interesting upgrades as we can get ourselves access to. We're going to try and ignore most of these enemies if we can. We're going to be trying to take out a variety of sentry system nodes and things momentarily anyway. And the longer we spend fighting... Oh, boy. That's an alarm system. If it detects us, it's going to alert all the enemies in the area. We're going to go take out this defensive system, although it may give us a hard time, especially if all these enemies are still chasing us, which they are. You'll also notice on the map that we have a bubble around us when we're firing. That's telling us the amount of noise we're making. There are suppressed weapons you can use that will allow you to kill things without making as much noise so other enemies won't necessarily immediately come running. That guy just looked the wrong way, so we got pretty lucky there. Let's open this with a key. There we go. We want to come in here and destroy this system. Dangerous though it is. Ooh, that was a bad move on my part. I thought I could move through there, but evidently could not. Let's just hide behind this wall for a second here. We should be safe. Alright, we need to try and destroy this thing, because if we can, then we will... Oh boy. We will successfully have cleared out all of the defensive systems on board the ship. Which means it'll be a lot safer. So we've uh, effectively taken that 23,000 objective there in the top right already. Next up what we're going to do is we're going to quickly run over this way. Grab ourselves a um, last tech advance perhaps. And try and get in here and destroy this alarm system before rushing back to the core. Because we're quickly running out of time, and if we don't beat it quickly, we're going to go over our time limit and get less reward. It may not even be worth trying to come over here because of the amount of time it's likely going to take us. Thankfully, time does stop when you're trying to plan your route here, so it's not awful. I think we will actually go straight for the core at this point, because I suspect trying to take out the alarm is going to make things a lot harder for us, and there's not that many enemies left down here anyway, so the amount of things that are probably going to rush us is probably minimal. So let's zip our way back over here and grab a key so we can actually get into the boss fight area. Because right now that is locked. If we rush around here, we should be able to open this up. There we go. Taking keys from other other uh, ships doesn't actually help us at all. We want to try and make sure we do everything self-contained. And now we have to destroy this brain here at maximum speed. 
explosives, we can use our other weaponry if we want. And this should be pretty easy. Aliens are coming to come get us, but this core is about to be destroyed. When the core is down, it's game over for them. There we go. Perfect. That's kind of what a ship in this game is like. You gotta go in pretty fast, you gotta pick your objectives quickly. And you gotta try and get everything of value that you can get. So here we made a decent amount of profit. Going in there for one mission, we got our reward. We got our massive boost for being fast. Because the faster we are, the bigger the reward we get. We got four tech advances from finding those research nodes. And we got two bonus resources from destroying sentry systems and getting our loadout below the required cost. So we made a pretty decent amount of bank there. We still spent money on getting our loadout up in the first place. So it's not entirely revenue. But our bank went up by 194000 there. So that's awesome. And now we move up to the next node. As you move forward, you'll see the ships get increasingly difficult. I'm surprised we still have a level 1 here. It's fairly unusual. But now we have level 3 garrison with all kinds of systems in it. There's other specific ones here, like that wrench symbol means that it's a repair system. If you don't destroy that first, it'll be rebuilding the other systems as soon as you take them down, so that can be nasty. We have uh, some very different kinds of requests here. This one says we have to have uh, sentry systems left alive. This one says we can't use any supply pods for healing or repairs. Over here, we have one saying we can't break down the door locks. So we can open them with keys, but we can't break them all open in one go to move around easier. Uh, here we go. Here's keep juggernaut factories. That's something making bigger enemies. We have to make sure we keep that intact. So there's all kinds of different requirements that the different vehicles, or other different... Uh, different wrecks here will give us. So let's hop into another one and see what we can do with our new weapons. Hop into a garrison class ship here. We're not probably going to do the whole thing. Just wanted to give you a taste of what the game is really all about and how it sort of progresses as you go. So, if we want to select our loadout again, now we can change things up a little bit if we want. We have a heavy machine gun ricochet, which sounds pretty cool. It'll allow us to uh, fire rounds off the walls with much heavier firepower, but it also means that we're less maneuverable if we take it. So let's take that one for now. Give ourselves eh, a thousand, a good amount of ammo, 1,250, so we can spam away. Anything else we got? We got cluster grenades. We'll take those with us. We also acquired a smart machine gun, which gives it homing attacks, which is pretty cool. So let's equip... Uh, We'll leave the spike on for now, actually, and we'll equip the cluster grenades instead of our high explosive grenades. There we go. In addition, we also found a sensor suite. What does this do? This allows us to reveal a wider area when faced with an enemy jammer system. This will let us keep seeing. If the enemies have things, it'll stop us from having visibility. Not going to need it, but we'll equip it anyway, just so we can see what's what. And we could pump up our health a ton if we wanted to. <clears throat> so if you're having a hard time, or you're getting into the later areas, you can buff yourself up significantly in order to make sure that you're a little bit more survivable. You could take a ton of weapons. Like, we could go all crazy here if we wanted. We could take this as mouse 3. And mouse 2, we could take another machine gun. There we go. So we have three machine guns right now, which means we could do this. If you really want to have ridiculous firepower, you can go for ridiculous firepower. Alrighty, so let's head over here to this new ship. We can't get in from this side. It's a very small one over here, but that's because it's a bunch of different nodes. This one has a bunch of disparate areas rather than all being clustered together, which is really cool. So there's a lot of these things which require being approached from different ways that you might not initially expect, which is, I think, really neat. So like here, we actually don't want to go to this uh, first derelict at all because we want to go over to the other one that has the repair station and destroy that first because if we don't destroy the repair station then we're going to run into problems later with all everything we destroy immediately coming back right so here what they're saying oh you actually can't get through this door because we need a key for it so even though we came all this way it's not going to help us because we don't have a key I have to go around to a different door first perhaps can I even get into this ship I can from the top. 
So I have to go around this way. So planning your route with your map is really important, otherwise you have no idea where you're going. And you want to try and avoid wasting time as much as possible because of how it rewards you for acting quickly. So it is definitely roguelike in that you acquire resources over time and power you up. Ow, there's all kinds of different enemies in here. I'm not being very careful right now, so we're just gonna fire away here. Maximum firepower is our current objective. The important thing though right now is we destroy this sucker. If we don't, everything we destroy is just gonna keep coming back. There we go, with our crazy amount of firepower, it's not too hard. But, uh, this is not necessarily representative of a standard attempt, because normally you don't have three machine guns on you unless you're really going in hard. The problem being here, even if we do everything perfectly, there's a good chance we will not be able to make back enough money to reduce our costs on this mission completely. So we can run around and be an absolute force to be reckoned with, destroying everything we find, but it may not help us. It may not help us entirely in the end. Right now, though, we're just going to zip around here so we can use a little bit more of our firepower to see a little bit more about what this uh, varied location is all about. There's a couple of really interesting uh, systems in this ship. We'll take a look at the uh, door lock system here, which is a little bit unusual compared to the other things we've seen so far. And yeah, it's, it's just pretty cool. It's, uh, it's very challenging as well. Especially once you get to the higher difficulty areas and they start throwing more and more and more stuff at you. This is a very simple password system, which is easy enough to get through. But if you're being attacked, it's really difficult. So you have to kind of balance your desire to get into these areas with your desire to uh, not die. So you have to kill things before you do, but that takes time, so it might not be worth it if you can get the keys. And it's a really interesting balancing act of trying to control what you have available to you and what you want to get done. So that's really interesting. Plus the music is pretty cool. I like how the sound changes when you zip around in outer space. Heading out here already changes and mutes everything and then we head back into the ship. It'll pick up the pace again. This guy is tough, but not for long. So as you can see, the enemies interact in a variety of different ways. Oof. There's some that ram you, some that fire at you, some that dive bomb at you, some fire explosive shots, some push you around, some fire attacks that you can knock around, like that energy blast there, we can fire back towards the enemy who fires it at us. It does have a fairly large blast on it though, so we have to be somewhat careful. There's just a bunch of really interesting uh, gameplay elements in here that make them really fun to play. Now if we were looking around in here, there is a resource for us to gather in the top right, so we can grab that. But yeah, it's just a really interesting an Aegis shell. That sounds pretty cool. There's all kinds of things to find along the way. There's all kinds of different upgrades you can get if you get lucky and find them. And using them all together often is really cool. Now, at this point, we're just going to go straight for the, uh, the core here. Because we've already accomplished all of the objectives. We've got the drone factories intact. We destroyed the alarm system. And we've used no supply pods. We want to make sure we get as much of a time bonus as possible. Because we've only got two minutes left. So we want to try and go nice and quick here. Plus with all our firepower, this core shouldn't last too long. Let's get in here and try and clear out all of the guards in that. Right now there's a lot of them. Fire some cluster grenades. Try and clear out some of the swarm that's in here. Yeah, the combat feels surprisingly satisfying. A lot of the weapons have a lot of nice kickback to them. Even though we're largely weightless in here, it does feel pretty good. We're going to use some of our repairs to keep ourselves alive. Shove all this firepower back in their faces so that they can't uh, destroy us too fast. And hopefully we'll be able to start killing the core here pretty quickly. We are hitting it with some of our reflecting bullets, which is fun. Even though we're not actually aiming much at it right now. Let's try and do some damage here if we can. Oh no, we got shoved straight to the corner by that spinning guy. There is a lot of mess in this room. A whole lot of badness. Throw some cluster grenades over there and try not to die. As you can see, enemies are being spawned in. This guy is shoving us around so we can't get away from these other attacks. There's all kinds of cool stuff. We are going to try and do our best here to quickly kill this core though, because otherwise we are going to be hard pressed to do anything else in this run. But there we go, we brute forced our way through it, only as a result of having ridiculously high hull. That may not have been how you want to actually do a run, but uh, showing you the crazy firepower you can equip if you choose to is still pretty fun. 
But yeah, that is basically what Cryptarch is all about. It's all about efficiency and speed and planning and sneakiness, mitigating random elements and dealing with what you find along the way, and it's really interesting. So even though we spent an enormous amount of money there, we actually came out okay. Because we got all three objectives, which gets us a bonus, we got our equipment rebate, we've got our time bonus, and our initial reward, so we actually came out more or less even there. So even though we spent a ridiculous amount of resources on powering ourselves up, it kind of worked. My Ricky probes are showing several new types now, of offensive systems and morphons aboard the target vessels. Indeed. This new information to the TACNAV now. So there are a couple other things that are worth mentioning. If you die, what happens is you move laterally. So you see how we've moved up three nodes in the bottom of the map here. Rather than, or I guess vertically in this case, uh, rather than moving back an area or going back here and fighting the exact same setup of, uh, of derelicts, it sends us over laterally to a new thing on the same tier. It has a new set of four derelicts and we can choose between them as well. So you won't get to choose one that you thought, okay, well I really like this first one, but if I don't get that, I'll go to the second one. If you fail one, it sends you to an entirely new variety of, of derelicts. So that's also important to keep in mind. And they do get real hard. Um, as the difficulty keeps increasing, the reward goes up, but they get a lot more dangerous. So it's pretty interesting. They do a good job of scaling things up. It's pretty pretty enjoyable to play, and the, the variety of upgrades and builds you can take is also pretty cool. With that all said, the game is about $14 on Steam, uh, Canadian anyway. There will be a link to the game in the description below. If you found it interesting, don't forget to tell me what you thought about in the comments below, as well as checking the description below for the link to the Steam store page or personal links for myself to find things like my Twitter, Twitch, or Patreon pages if you're interested in supporting me in any of those resources. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. For now, this has been Vanguard of Valor, and welcome to Cryptarch.